Welcome to Let's Break Serpent Isle. In this video we are going to complete the game in a manner which the designers never intended or probably even thought possible. To kick off we need to go to Moonshade as soon as possible. First we have to get into Monitor. There are two ways to do this. First we can just ask nicely at the gate. This is the most reliable way, but if you have the patience we can enter through foul means. Go to the west gate. Have Shamino drop all his weapons and ask him to leave. Save in case it doesn't work. Assail Shamino just outside the gate so that the guardsman sees it. When the guards arrive, disarm yourself but keep hitting Shamino. If you're unlucky the guards will just slay you, but if it works correctly Shamino will open his mouth and say, Wilt thou come quietly? Say yes. Now you have been arrested by your faithful companion and are rotting in jail. Fortunately there is a secret exit. Break jail and open the west gate using the winch. Don't talk to the gatekeeper. Have Shamino join your party and head to the local pub. Speak to Lord Marsden who will explain that all the knights have gone to the pub to bury their fallen comrades. Rescue Yolo by talking first to him and then to Marsden and bribing Spector with 30 monetari. To get this amount we need to collect some donations for the free Yolo fund. Walk around the houses and steal the small amounts of change you find in people's cupboards and nightstands. Now go to the north gate at Monitor and go up to the battlements on the eastern side where the ramparts meet the mountain. There. Build a staircase out of bread up on the crenellations. You should only need three pieces of bread to make the ladder which we are building now for later use. This will become important later. Now go back to the west gate. Make sure it's open. Ask the gatekeeper to open it. He will do the exact opposite and also call your escort. Marston and company will now all be moved to the crypt where they shall stay forever. Now get some halberds and two handed swords. These will be very useful when we need to kick some ass. Finally get 15 more loaves of bread which are needed to build a second set of stairs. Keep these in a bag or something as the staircase needs to be built out of town. You may also wish to pillage the town to your satisfaction prior to leaving. Go directly to the bank. Do not pass Sleeping Bull. Do not collect Selena. We have no need for keys or such nonsense as we are going to do a slightly more traditional break in. As you approach the bank, build a stairway to the roof using the 15 loaves and save. Now the interesting part begins. Walk around the roof and the magical traps within the bank will be activated. You should get beamed out to the grass beside the bank. Run quickly to the southeast spell and you should get teleported into the bank. This can be fiddly so you may need to reload a few times before it works properly. Now strip the bank clean and run around aimlessly inside until you are teleported out. This may take a while but be patient and it will happen eventually. Go to the sleeping bull and talk to Flindo. If Selena approaches you, tell her to piss off. Get Hawk released. Make sure you are only carrying one of the gold bars when you do this or they will all go to the pikemen which we do not want. Go to Moonshade and talk to Flindo, picking up some blood moss along the way. It's in the southeast swamp.
asked to be introduced to the Mage Lord, and then dither around talking to the mages until Rotaluncia's servant appears. Talk to Flindo again, and ask him about the appointment. You should then get sucked into the banquet hall no matter what the time of day or night. Leave the banquet, and then ask Bushia the Provisioner about Pothos. Now find Pothos again and get him to arrange a visit to Erstam in exchange for some blood moss you just happened to be carrying. As a byproduct, this will trigger the Rotoluncia subplot. It is interesting to see what happens if all your followers are dead at this point, but that is optional. When you confront Roto, steal her ritual blooding device and keep it with you. If you ever come across any dragons, use it on them to make them say OW. The blooding device is, in a sense, the most powerful weapon in the entire game. It does just one point of damage with each application, but it ignores armour and it can be used any number of times while the inventory display is open. The damage caused by the device then arrives all at once when your inventory is closed. If you are ever having difficulty killing an opponent, just press I, then use the blooding device on them 20 or so times to make them fall down dead. Be careful though, if you remove too many hit points at once the game won't notice that they're dead and instead they'll enter a weird, rigid, stunned state. Do the Erstam quest and get the Fire Parrot's egg. Create Boyden and then get the Jawbone from Erstam's potting shed. Take his scrolls if this pleases you. You may wish to have Boyden join your party. I didn't because we have another follower lined up later on. You can acquire various potions by watching Vassal work and stealing them as he puts them down. This does make everyone present quite upset, however. Obtain a green potion using this method, it may come in handy later. If you get a second one, give it to Shamino at an inappropriate moment to turn him into the glowing man. Go to Monk Isle via the gate, again in Erstam's potting shed. We need to get three fresh mandrake roots. To get the mandrake successfully, you must wait for the salt tides to be in phase or whatever. This means consulting the nameless monk, who seems to have read too much Stephen King, and badgering him continually. To make him easier to identify, shove a green potion down his throat to make him glow green. Back at Moonshade, trade these in for a spellbook from Fera Biblio. Go to Pothos' house and get the hidden key. Open the secret door and the stairs leading to his house. Go downstairs. Take the lightning whip and open the secret door in the north. Open the steel door with Pothos' key and go to the football pitch. Grab all the neat stuff and let the beasts kill you, otherwise you'll be trapped. Steal the comb of beauty from the chest in Columnus' garden. Now, beam out to the silver seed from Moonshade. As you may notice, the Amulet of Balance needs seven days to recharge, so we'll be stuck here for a while. Talk to the commander and try to appear as fraudulent as possible to instill his doubt. Take the keyring and sleep for 168 hours, 14 12-hour sessions, ignoring the screams of agony from your followers. If you have Boyden, ask him to leave first, otherwise he may explode from starvation. Get Boyden to rejoin as necessary, and then beam out to Moonshade. Feed the party quickly before they all die. Go to Stefano's old house outside the western town wall. The key is in the hollow tree outside. Get false coin and transcribe it. We'll use it to pay for all the other spells we will need. Finally, to reset the silver seed, Go back to the gate, then sleep for another 168 hours in the first bed you come across. Go to Bushia the Provisioner. Make a pile of 100 monetari and place it at her feet. Now cast false coin on it repeatedly, creating 500 monetari, approximately 1500 guilders, with each shot.
pick them all up and get her to change them into guilders. Do this whenever you need cash. Now buy all the spells in town without bothering to haggle. From here on, whenever you need to buy something, use false coin to create piles of 100 gold, glowing things, bottle tops, whatever, depending on the city. Create the money right in front of the guy you're buying from to make it obvious that you're about to defraud him. Make sure you get the following spells. As you can see, Mortegro the Death Mage is our main supplier. Telekinesis from Mortegro. Fetch from Melano. Mass Death from Mortegro. Restoration in Mortegro's desk. Serpent Bond from Mortegro. Mind Blast from Mortegro. You may also want Death Vortex, also from Mortegro. These spells contain such power that the game itself is unable to withstand their might. Go to the Silver Seed, making sure you have plenty of gold coins first. Buy the spell Vibrate from the Mage Lady. We're going to have a lot of fun with this spell. Start by doing the maze. Everyone who traverses through the maze gets 1000 experience points, so take the entire party through instead of just the avatar. Lead the party close to the maze boundary, but not so close that they all run off and leave you to it. Tell them all to leave, enter the maze, and then, when your weapon vanishes from your hand, call over to your milling minions and ask them to rejoin you. They follow you through the maze and are a thousand points richer for it. To gain experience quickly, have a chat with Stumpy the Dragon and solve his riddles. He is in the third stairwell in the Aramdol area. Again, this boosts all present. You should have hit level 6 by now, so do the Fiend and the Outpost next. Don't forget to pick up the Ring of Shal and the Orb. Strictly that's all we need from here, but we may as well kill the Fiend anyway since he's dangerously mental. If you have the carrying capacity, it is also worth grabbing some of the exploding chests. These may come in useful later. The Fiend won't attack unless you actually complete his quest, so you can just walk right up to him. Cast Vibrate on him. All his spells will plop out onto the floor, rendering him considerably less dangerous. Beat him up and leave. The Vibrate trick works on any spell-casting enemies. In the outpost, do not use any gunpowder. A few blows of a halberd will clear the rubble. We will need the powder for other tasks later on. Go and do Aram Dol. As you approach the leash himself, save. Next, press I. Drop the ritual blooding device next to him and use it on him about 40 times, keeping the inventory window open all the while so the game's action is paused. Close the inventory window. With charming banality for such a powerfully evil character, he'll yell OW in pain and indignation before falling lifeless to the ground. If you'd prefer to knock him unconscious and deal the final blow yourself, use about 35 applications of the blooding device. Take care not to overshoot these figures by too much, or he'll end up alive and stunned with a negative number of hit points. Now, go back to the keep and plant the silver seed. If you kill some of the three witches immediately, two barrels of powder should do the job, you are treated to a very interesting conversation in which some or all of the speakers are in fact dead. 
Once the silver seed is planted, you should have made level 8. If not, go back to Aramdol's place and keep killing man spiders until you have. Normally we'd have our work cut out getting off the Isle of Moonshade. Instead, we are now going to make use of elite exploit in the Silver Seed. First, rearrange or temporarily discard possessions so as to give the Avatar 20 stones of spare carrying capacity. Make sure he still has his lockpicks, a spellbook and the Ring of Shal to drive it, and a fairly good weapon. Go to the northern room where the commander hangs out. Notice the grey pillars all around it. Double click on any one of these pillars. For reasons never fully explained, you should now be in the test of purity. Go to the Dupre room and kill the worms with the hammer provided. When the last worm appears, Hit it once and kill Dupre with a suitable weapon from your backpack. Only the hammer works on the worms, unfortunately. He may defend himself with a glass sword. Quickly vibrate him and pocket it. You can sometimes acquire several glass swords this way. Take Dupre's body. Pick the lock on the door and go to the Shamino room. Kill him, and then everyone else. Then press the sex button. Finally, do YOLO's room, taking the bodies of Dupre and Shamino back with you into reality. I use them to redecorate the sleeping bull. When you leave, the test master congratulates you, and without your noticing, removes your gloves, sneaks the serpent ring onto your finger, and puts your gloves back on again. Maybe he should consider an alternative career as a pickpocket. When you speak to him again, he suffers from an attack of amnesia. Now we are in Furnace, having brute forced our way back to the mainland. Get the serpent tooth from the skeleton among the mushrooms. Look around and find six chill scrolls, three loaves of bread, and various other oddments to build two stairways. One requires 15 objects, the other needs just three. Build the large stairway next to the brass door between the two northernmost buildings. Get onto the wall and head north until you come to the mountains. Follow the mountain edge west until you come to Monitor. Build a little ladder with three loaves onto the crenellations and go down the ladder on the other side which you made last time you were in Monitor. You are now back in Monitor. At this point you may wish to visit the Sleeping Bull and talk to Ensorcio. He has a spiral missile spell which may be amusing. Sadly that's all we have time for right now. In the next episode we'll be brutalising the test of knighthood, robbing the dream realm, and demonstrating poor man's ethereal travel. See you then and thanks for watching. To get this amount, we need to collect some donations for the free ILO fund. <sighs> to get this amount, we need to collect some donations for the free YOLO fund. Rescue, uh, rescue YOLO by talking to him. Go to the West Gate. Have Shamino. <sighs> Go to the West Gate. Have Shamino drop all his weapons and ask him to leave. As a byproduct, this will trigger the lot. As a byproduct, this will trigger the Rotaluncia subplot. Create the money right in front of the face of the Look, create the money right in front of the guy you're buying from to make it obvious that you're about to defraud him. 
From here on, whenever you need to buy something, use false coin. Blah. Kill him and everyone else, and then press the left button to uh, have your way with the corpses. And finally, do Yolo's room. Finally, you may wish to have Boyden join your party. You may wish to have Boyden. Boyden. You may wish to have poor. You may wish to have Boyden join your party. I didn't because we. I didn't because we have another follower lined up later on.